Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a rational equation with complex numbers. So we have z squared divided by z plus i equals i. As you should know, i is the imaginary unit, the number whose square equals negative 1. Sometimes people define i as the square root of negative 1, but you got to remember it's the principal square root because negative 1 has two square roots in the complex world. Anyways, that's a different story. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos on basics of complex numbers. Or if you have any questions, feel free to let us know in the comment section down below. All right, let's get started. We have this ratio or fraction, whatever you want to call it, z squared divided by z plus i. So I can't really think of a second method for this problem. I don't know if it does exist, please let us know. But I'm just going to cross multiply, all right? I don't think there's anything else we can do here besides that. Oh, actually, yes, there is something we can do. And we can definitely talk about that as well. So let me call the general method first method. I just thought of something else. And cross multiply. So z squared is going to be zi plus i squared. Something to keep in mind, i squared is negative 1. We talked about it, right? So this can be written as zi minus 1. So we got this z squared equals zi minus 1. And now we can put everything on the same side to make this a quadratic equation and solve it using the quadratic formula, right? What else can we use? Not the cubic formula, right? So the quadratic formula gives us negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is i squared, minus 4ac, which is minus 4, divided by 2a. As you know, again, this pops up all the time. That's why one thing that you should never forget if you're dealing with complex numbers, that i squared is always, always, always equal to negative 1. Okay? So i is i. So we're not going to replace anything i with that. And this is going to give us the square root of 5, the square root of negative 5 under the radical. So it's going to be imaginary. We're going to write it as square root of 5i. Be very careful because I'm not talking about something like 1 plus square root of 5i here. We're actually going to factor out an i. They're different. Be very careful because uh, it's very easy to confuse those two, two things. So now we can go ahead and factor out an i and write this as 1 plus minus root 5. And all of that is divided by 2. That's what I meant. These two are not the same. Make sense? Okay. So that's the z values. Done. We're done. That's it. Well, there are two solutions. And obviously, you can write this in so many different forms. For example, you can write z as, if you want to separate this, uh, you can write it as, and let's just go with the plus sign first. Uh, we can write it as uh, root 5 plus 1 over 2 multiplied by i. And let that be z1 and z2. You can write as, I don't know why I wrote the root 5 first. I guess we could write 1 plus root 5 and 1 minus root 5 over 2 times i. Again, the solutions are multiples of i, something, some real number multiplied by i, right? That's how they are. They, so that's why the solutions are considered imaginary. Okay, what is the second method for solving this problem? Let's go ahead and take a look right and if you would you were you able to guess it okay if you said yes we're going to replace z with a plus b i you got it a plus b i is important because it's also the name of this channel right so hopefully um, you'll remember that and now we can go ahead and do it uh, should we cross multiply uh doesn't matter. Maybe not because, again, we'll follow a different path. We can follow different um, alternatives, but let me go ahead and do this first. So I'm replacing A plus BI or Z with A plus BI. And of course, here I want to uh, arrange the denominator a little bit. I can expand the numerator, but not yet. Maybe write this as A plus B plus 1I. Here's where the two alternative paths come in. I can go ahead and cross multiply and solve it, which kind of makes more sense. 
And then the other method that makes less sense is going to be using the conjugates. And I'm like, why? And my answer would be, why not? Okay, so let's go ahead and see what, what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a little shorter and multiply by the conjugate. The conjugate in this case would be a minus uh, a b plus 1 times i. And of course, we have to multiply the top and the bottom. Uh, in the numerator, we haven't expanded it, so we need to do that. Let's go ahead and expand this. That's going to give us a squared minus b squared plus 2abi. Notice that i squared is negative 1. That's how I got that. And multiply this by this expression right here. That's a 1, by the way, not an i. That should be real. And then at the bottom, we have a squared plus b plus 1 squared, right? That's the sum of 2 squared, and that's equal to i. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and distribute the whole thing, and like this. Okay, let me show you. This one multiply by that first. Okay, so it's going to be like a times a squared minus b squared. And then I want to divide by the denominator because there's a common denominator. I guess we could do that later. Uh, let's do it later. Fine. Change my mind because I want to simplify this first. So I want to multiply a squared by a squared minus b squared. That's going to be the first real part. And then the second real part is going to come from this product. i squared is going to give us a plus sign because a minus times a plus sign. So we're going to get something like that looks like this plus uh, 2ab times b plus 1. And then the imaginary parts are going to be formed by the product of two things. Uh, first of which I'll use these two first, 2a squared b. And then from that, I'm going to subtract these two things with a minus sign. I think it's going to look like this. And then the whole thing is going to be multiplied by i. Make sense? And then we're going to divide the whole thing by this. Again, this is something that you probably would never use because it's too long and kind of cumbersome. But anyways, this is just a method. And then let me tell you what's going to happen next. Uh, since uh, this is equal to i, the real part must be 0. And this is the real part. If the real part is a fraction and it's 0, the, then the numerator of that fraction must be 0. So this must be 0. And this must be 1. And good luck solving that system of equations. Let's go ahead and talk about my uh, other approach, like 2a. Let's call this 2a. And I guess starting here. And now we're going to talk about 2b. Of course, I had to make the joke, right? 2b or not 2b. So after replacing z with a plus bi, we should be getting something like this. And of course, I cross multiplied because that will be easier, okay? Now, if you expand this, you're going to get that. If you expand this, oops, there should be an i here. You should be getting something like uh, I, a, I times a plus b plus 1i. And then when you multiply, you're going to get a squared minus b squared plus 2abi equals, uh, again, we'll get an i squared scenario here, negative b plus 1, and then plus ai. And if you now compare the real parts to real parts, oops, that wasn't the real part, obviously, uh, then you'll be getting something like this. This is the real part. That's the real part. They should be equal. This is the imaginary part. That's the imaginary part. They should be equal. Make sense? From there, you should get the values for A and B, and therefore the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.